Hey, Balancers, and welcome back to another episode of the Balance Theory Podcast. I just want to start by thanking every single one of you that have taken the time to fill out our quick survey. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, I've basically put out a little questionnaire. The link is in the show notes, and basically I want your input to help me as I rebrand the podcast in the next coming months. As you all know, the podcast has been created and absolutely grown as a byproduct of you guys, of this community that's being built, and I want that to continue to be the momentum of the show. So if you haven't had a chance to leave your thoughts, I'm going to be leaving it open for a couple more weeks. The link is in the show notes, and I would really appreciate your feedback and as well, just a little bit of an opportunity for me to get to know you. That aside, I hope you're all having a fantastic morning or day, wherever you're tuning in. I know most of you listen on the way to either to and from work. So I hope you've got a great day lined up, nothing too crazy. But today I want to talk about something that I know impacts every single one of us, whether you're single or in a relationship, because we have moments of friction in every single relationship we have. And the premise of today's conversation is all around why and when arguments are healthy or when they're not. Now, I just want to start by saying that if you think that the ideal relationship, the perfect relationship, I mean, side note, like whether that even exists, but the concept of having like a great relationship, if you think that that is one that's void of any disagreements or arguments, I think that you are delusional, to be honest. I think Accepting that this is a natural part, that friction, that difference of opinions is a natural part of being in relationships, then I think that's a big, big starting point. Because ultimately, and I don't know about you guys, but like I don't even agree with myself half the time. You know, I'm torn, I have different opinions, and it's really unrealistic to expect somebody else to just go along and agree with absolutely everything you say all the time. And really, if you're an open-minded person and you want to grow, you actually want people to give you their honest and genuine opinion to input their perspective, right? Even if that comes at moments of friction and you feel like there's a bit of a disconnect, on the whole, you should appreciate the fact that there are differences with people. And so just as a springboard off that, arguments or moments of tension, I suppose, I think are very normal in relationships. I mean, All of my relationships are not without those moments, whether big or small. But today I really just want to dive into what makes these moments healthy and how we can actually use them as moments of strength rather than kind of chipping blocks that chip away and deteriorate our bonds and our relationships. For me, and this is really simple, a healthy relationship comes down to the aftermath. So I think in the heat of the moment, right, you're emotional, they're emotional, things come out that maybe said, miss said, maybe you didn't actually express the way you were feeling properly, maybe they didn't. And sometimes when you're both emotional it's, it, and heightened, really, it's hard to have that logical conversation. But when you go off, you cool down, you have some time apart, you know, whether, whenever you come back and, and try and piece it together, it is the nature of that reconnection and what directly happens after that argument That is the absolute determining factor of the healthiness of these kinds of moments. And so I think irrespective, you know, sometimes it's heat of the moment. I think there are a few key pillars that really determine or can signify to you when an argument or past arguments are actually healthy. The first one, which is honestly the golden pillar of all relationships, is open communication. If we just zoom out, right, away from emotion, away from like specificities of what you argue about, right? An argument at its core is people communicating their opinion, thoughts and feelings, and that may conflict with what the other person thinks, feels or has in mind. So when you have these arguments, even though they can be heated and in the moment and emotional, it's space for you both to express your point of difference. You're just expressing your opinion, your point of view. I mean, provided that's the case, That's a healthy environment. It's healthy that you have open communication and can express points of difference, even if it comes with a bit of tension or heightened emotion. The second thing that's really important, though, in and amongst all of this is active listening. So, you know, when you're talking to someone, but all you're thinking about is what you want to say next, that is not active listening. Active listening is giving the other person the complete floor space to share how they feel, to show up without judgment to try and, you know, push down your ego, which is probably quite heightened if you're feeling quite emotional or passionate about something and actually just listen 
to where they're coming from. I mean, a couple of weeks ago, we did an episode on the different mindsets you need to feel in control of your life. And one of them was all about moving away from a closed mindset and being open, having an open mindset. And I think a really key point here that I'm going to reiterate is just because you're open-minded and you're open to what somebody else has to say, doesn't mean you have to accept that or take it on as your own opinion. So I think sometimes when we get into these arguments, we refrain from giving the other person floor space or airtime because we think that that's like, you know, in an egotistical way, them kind of winning, them kind of feeling like they're right or that we've, you know, accepted or bowed down to what they've thought. But I think there's a strength in being open and giving the other person the respect to express themselves without the need necessarily for you to say, okay, yep, like they're right. Of course, this has to be reciprocated. So if you're going to be an active listener, a healthy argument or a healthy disagreement is one in which there's obviously that open communication, but you're both prepared to give each other floor space and airtime to vent and express your thoughts. And again, it's not just being silent and eye contact, it's genuinely listening. You can always tell when somebody's like half-assed listening and it's not nice when you're, you know, you've given that to someone and they're not giving it back. So this absolutely has to be a two-way thing. And I guess to make the most of this, to actually like have open communication, to actually have active listening, one thing that's worked for me is kind of not trying to force that in a moment where I feel super heightened. So generally, like I said before, if you're very emotional or passionate about something, it's, it's actually hard to step away from your ego, step away from maybe those irrational thoughts or really heightened emotions to sit there and be, you know, like rational and logical. So the easiest and the probably like most beneficial thing you can do for your relationship is to actually just walk away, have a little bit of space. Because I don't know about you guys, but when I have tried to have a conversation in the heat of the moment, I've always ended up saying something I regret or that I didn't actually mean. And it's because you can't detach from those heightened emotions and thoughts. And so the best thing you can do, and I honestly cannot believe that almost as a 30 year old, I'm repeating what my mom told me like most of my life every single day, which is like count to five and take a few deep breaths. Like really that's just giving you that moment of pause So you can just detach and kind of, you know, cool down from the heightened state. And when you're both in that position, we're like, okay, we've had some time to think. I don't know about you guys, but I'm a thinker. Like the thoughts just go through my head and I make sense of things in my head. But if I'm kind of in that forced, like heat of the moment, it it never happens that way. So give yourself time to come back so that you have the opportunity to have a healthy argument, one in which is open communication and active listening. The second thing to look out for, and I think this is one probably like best suited for romantic relationships, or if you have like a business partner as well, it's also a really good one or a colleague you work quite closely with is a mindset shift to you being a team, right? And every argument or disagreement you have is an opportunity for you to problem solve together. This is a massive mindset shift because often when we disagree with people, it's like me versus you. It's us versus them, right? There's a complete like we're heading into war against each other. But if you start to realize that you're actually on a team and the challenges you face, i.e. your disagreements are just, a it's a problem solving exercise. It brings this really nice collaborative approach into it. And that's when I think people are much more receptive to active listening and things like that, because you realize that you're actually a team, especially if you're like, you know, romantically with somebody you guys are life partners. Like you're going through life together. You're going to have challenges. And if you start to treat each other like teammates, as opposed to enemies, that's massive. That's a massive shift in terms of how you actually approach these moments in life. And and this particular mindset shift has been massive for me. Sometimes when, you know, Anja and I have a little bit of a disagreement, he'll just like grab me and remind me and be like, we're on the same team. And, and it's true. And I'm really grateful he does that because, you know, I, I very easily fall into me versus him type energy. But, but I think, you know, if you and your partner are on the same page and you can really foster and nurture that vibe of, you know, we're a team and we're problem solving things together, it, it really does change the dynamic of your communication. I think if your starting point is me versus them, then you've already lost in terms of fostering that healthy environment. All right. The third and final tip comes down to this concept of accountability. So at the beginning of the episode, I shared that obviously it's got to do with the nature of the argument itself, but what actually happens directly after. So I think, you know, if you've, if you've come from a place where you're on the same team and therefore you can foster this open communication and active listening, 
You can even take it one step further and be each other's accountability partner. So I think that arguments or moments where you're kind of at odds with each other, shall we say, actually provide an opportunity for personal growth and learning. So depending on your nexus to that person, how well they know you, sometimes they can actually give you some constructive criticism that can help you actually, you know, work out how you can deal with things better next time. Or you guys as a relationship can work out things better next time. And I think by reflecting on not only your own behaviors, but, but the other person with you and, and trying to kind of use it as a springboard for how you can do better next time is like self-growth within the context of a relationship, right? I feel like sometimes if you argue and disagree and it gets swept under the rug, even if you've had like a quote unquote healthy argument and you've listened to each other, if it gets swept under the rug and there's no impetus or neither of you are willing to be proactive to kind of work out, well, how do you avoid actually getting there in the first place? Depending on the nature of the argument, right? Like you don't want to avoid disagreement because that is inevitable. But if it's something that you've encountered in your life, something in your day to day that you can alter or change, remove, or as a consequence of how you guys have, you know, resolved the issue, then make a change. Well, it's, it's about actually being proactive and taking those measures and holding each other accountable to the long-term changes that need to be made to ensure that thing doesn't keep coming up as a point of tension. You know, I feel like if it's had airtime, you've been able to discuss it and you've problem solved it together. Well, then solve the problem in real time. Don't just talk about it. Hold each other accountable as well. And if there is something that you genuinely feel your partner could, you know, try as a style of communication, even if it's like something from this episode or just something else in general that comes up, like you notice that they do it all the time and maybe it makes your life harder. You know, you can bring that up in a constructive way so that each time you have these moments of disagreement, which are inevitable and you have to accept that that's a part of a relationship, you can actually start to work out a framework. Okay, how do you guys actually like to discuss these things? I know like so many relationships where you have one side that just wants to talk about it straight away, vent, vent, get it out, like just say it how it is on the spot in the moment. And then the other party that needs like space and time to process and think. And obviously that way of resolving issues, like there's going to be conflict then again with how you actually resolve things together. So it's about being accountable to one another. It's about having these open discussions and saying, you know what, when we piss each other off or have a fight or whatever it is, like I actually need some space. And the other person goes, okay, well, I like to talk about it straight away. Okay. So how do we come together to communicate in a way that works for us both? Because if you've got the person who wants to talk about it and they didn't get to talk about it, that's further going to push them away. And then if you've got the person who doesn't want to talk about it and is forced to talk about it, they might say something that doesn't work for them, you know? So do you, do you meet in the middle and have like mini space so that, you know, you kind of both win or do you agree to try and talk about it straight away? Or do you agree to try and create a little bit of space? Or maybe the person who needs to get off their chest straight away can journal while they're waiting for the other person to discuss, you know, I mean, this is something you guys can get creative and come up with. But I think if you know you're in a moment of disagreement and you know that your partner is the kind of person that needs a timeout, rather than take that personally and be like, well, they're ignoring me or they don't want to talk about it, you know, getting dramatic as we do, you can just be like, okay, well, I know that's their style of communication. And, you know, if, if there are moments or opportunities for you to then offer them some tips or, or ways for you guys to work on that a little bit better to strengthen your relationship or at least understanding of one another, I think is a really great way to hold each other accountable in like yourself, your own self-awareness and your own self-growth. A final, I guess, comment or parting thought is that arguments that are fueled by anger or resentment or a desire to control the other person are never going to be conducive to this healthy concept of an argument, right? Like I think if one of the people in the, in the relationship or the disagreement is coming at it from any of those angles, especially like a desire to control, it really doesn't matter like how much you want to foster this healthiness in a relationship. It's going to be impossible because whether you like it or not, you're a team in trying to solve that problem. And if you have, I mean, I'm sure you can think of a time you did a uni assignment or a project at work where the other person just was not into it, not helping. It's the same thing in an argument. And, and it's almost something you can't force. You almost have to pick your battles with people that, you know, you can actually battle with. If not, my honest opinion is, is it worth like your energy and time to 
to work through problems with people who don't really want to work with you to solve them. You know, I mean, I've had friends like that in the past and it's almost like you're throwing so much of yourself into the relationship. You're giving so much effort and almost receiving nothing back or receiving the complete opposite back. And it's, you know, I guess just once you start to think about the nature of arguments, the source of where they're coming from and whether the person that you're working together with or disagreeing with is going to be like open to doing a healthy style or just having these kinds of conversations. I think if it's something you're interested in, like you should just surround yourself people that, that are going to be interested in it too, because I think it's such an important thing, right? Like why would you waste so much time trying to have a conversation or resolve something or trying to explain yourself to someone who's just not going to listen or not care to give you the time of day. They're just thinking about themselves all the time. You know, I've been there and it just, it really puts a dampener on your balance and sense of groundedness and whatever you're trying to achieve in and amongst your own self growth journey. So just a little parting thought from me, but for those of you listening who either have a romantic partner or somebody in your life, whether it's a best friend or a sibling, someone you're super close with that you feel that relationship could really benefit from this type of conversation that you just want them to be on the same page so that you can bring this up next time you have a disagreement or maybe you can talk about it in a proactive way, send this to them now so they can get up to speed with where you're at. And I really encourage you to have a conversation about it because I think it's just something that we think isn't really like, it's not natural, right? Like to think about how you would have an argument before you have it. But if you can actually put together like just some basic understanding as to how you both like to operate, then it just saves so much of like you not taking things personally or miscommunication. And you can actually start to work out a framework that works for you guys so that you can continue to problem solve as a team, as opposed to against each other. Like you don't want to get to 70 and feel so distant from each other because you've never understood that, oh, they just need some space. Like when we disagree, like how simple is that? So just have the conversation, share this episode. So your loved one or you, or that person in your life, you know, is on the same page as you. And yeah, those are my thoughts on healthy arguments and, and how really like the nature of them and what happens directly after them is the key factor in how they can be a strength in your relationship rather than a weakness, which I think we often view them as. So enjoy guys. I hope you've loved this episode. If you're listening on Spotify, there's a very cool new feature. It's a Q and a feature. So sometimes I'll put polls on there, which you guys can participate in. It's literally on the episode page. So if you open up your Spotify app now, you'll see it, or you can just drop me a comment with what you thought about the episode, or if there was anything raised that you're like, "Mm, I, I really want her to go deeper into detail with that. Drop me a comment there. Otherwise I'm always available on Instagram as well. All the links are in the show notes. And I guess I will see you all on Monday for another guest episode. Have a lovely rest of your week and until then stay balanced.